So now we need to go back to the uh, Go Quest Manager and fix these events here. Okay? And you're probably going to have to be doing this a lot um, while you build this because you're not going to have everything built all at once. Um, so, um, in this case, you can see here, this is where we have the problem. Um, this just needs to go back to that GUI text quest depth that we just had. So, we have a game object, uh, game object FSM in this case. Um, now we're going to go to uh, the owner. I'm going to specify the owner. And that's going to be, and this time I'm going to pick it from the list, just so I can, I can show you another way. It's going to be GUI. And it's going to be one of these. Which one is going to be? St steps. There we go. And what is the name of the FSM? Uh, you know, we probably don't even need that. We can just tell it the, what we need, because it's a global event. There we go. So that one's, that one's cleared out. Now the same thing here, right? Let's, yeah, same thing here. I can probably copy um, where was it at? I can probably copy this event. Uh, yeah, right click. Give me copy action. Sorry, it's, it's called an action, not an event. Well, an event is a whole set of actions. Uh, okay, and then I paste. I can delete this one. And um, I think it's going to be actually the same, same thing. Yeah, it's going to do exactly the same thing. Uh, it's going to add, it's going to advance it one, then it's going to advance it two. Okay. Okay. Um, so Go Quest Manager seem doesn't seem to have any problems. We're going to have to check this uh, sooner or later. Uh, Let's see what happens. I hit play now. Don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I don't get my text there. Yeah, we still need to uh, get some things working. There's some errors. It's not going to work yet. That's okay. So I, can, I can still pick up the grammar though. But my whole thing here is not working yet. Still get that buzz. So I need to keep keep working. Okay. You can see here that my counter is showing up on the screen, okay? But my text isn't yet because it's not ready. So um, let's, uh, let's go back now. Oops, sorry. Go play. Um, but you know, I think my quest text should actually be working. I should actually be getting some on-screen text. So let me double check this, okay? One important thing that you need to do <laughs> to make sure that your text, your GUI text, appears in the screen is you need to set some values in its inspector, obviously. <laughs> Forgot about that. So first of all, I noticed that the transition um, is off. Uh, the, the what works for this scene is 0.5, 0.5, 0.5. Uh, not sure why I did do 0.5. I don't know why just 0, 0, 0 doesn't work, but 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seems to work. Um, now I want to hit play. Um, you won't see this yet. Here it is. Find power source to save team. But I still need to do something. I needed to actually put values in these. Okay, so these are the values that I have. I have middle center here. Oh. Come on middle center. Um, alignment is going to be center. I don't know how that happened. Uh, this is going to be zero. Um, everything else is one. It's four. Aerial I'm using. No material. Font size. I guess I used 20 before. And this time I'm going to do 25. Why not? If it's too big I have to make it fit. And now I want to hit play. Um, do what we get. Find source, find power source to save the team. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can 
give that whatever you want. And the reason that this isn't showing, because remember I told it to, the reason that's not showing first is because the quest, the GUI text quest counter tells it to be none in the beginning until I actually get someplace it needs to be. Uh, let's see if the trigger is working to change the uh, GUI text, because uh, the trigger is there. Uh, trigger's not working yet. Um, yeah, so we have to keep working. So, it's a, it's, uh, so um, let's make sure that my trigger, trigger's there. Let's go to the Playmaker. That's still set up. Uh, it's listening to the advanced quest. Um, let's see if that's going to actually, if that gets triggered. This is what I meant before, where you can actually uh, watch it as you're playing to see if that actually gets triggered. Um, so let me go over here. Uh, it's listening. Okay. It is listening. Um, actually, that's the wrong one. I wanted to do the FSM for the trigger. Here we go. So that's the right click. Now I can see if that's going to, that's getting triggered at all. Oop. It actually is getting triggered and it is destroying itself. So we know that's working. the quest text. I still have one error that has to do with the cargo door. So that shouldn't do anything. That one error should not affect. We don't have the cargo door set up yet. So let's see if this is getting uh, quest steps. If this is getting updated. Nope. Look at that. That's not getting updated. So maybe I have something done or spelled wrong. Let's double check it. So it's waiting for the advanced quest stage, which is this variable. supposed to be coming from here. Oh, this is not set up. It's not setting that event out because that wasn't created uh, at the time that this was created. So I had to set, set this up. It's quite simple. Okay. Uh, it's going to be FSM. It's going to be, uh, I don't think I need to, yeah, specify the game object, uh, which game object it's going to be, send that event to the quest text steps. So to this one. Yeah. Oh, so I double clicked and now I have to drag it. Okay. Uh, quest, uh, quest. Click and drag it to here. And now advanced quest, quest stage. And that should work. Perfect. And uh, let's actually watch it while it's working this time. And you'll see that it would it will highlight this and go here and do a little check. And then since we're here, it should actually go and write quest text two upon the stage. Let's do that. Find power source. Boop. Ah, there we go. Find source. Oh, it did not output the new text. Right? So we need to fix that. It did um, advance the stage, but it didn't output the text. So, I don't know why. So it's got to be something in here. Uh, it's H2. Uh, I got stuck in here. I'm going to double check that. Hold on. 
And here I found why it wasn't working. So these weren't being advanced. Well, they weren't. Be, well, they actually were being advanced, but the problem was <laughs> they were being advanced from zero instead of one. Down here in this start state up here, state one. Um, up here where I set the init value of the quest stage, I should set that to one. So when it updates, <laughs> it will equal the two, and then the next time the three. But what's happening here is updating and entering and just being one, and there's no one here, okay? So <laughs> that now that I have that set correctly, that should work. Find power source, and of course you should be more eloquent with your text. I did fast. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, it's still not working. Well, there's something else wrong. Double check. Don't know how it happened, but my trigger update quest is wrong. So it's updating the wrong <laughs> FSM. Should be, um, this is the wrong FSM. Go quest manager should be here. So, the quest manager should be here, uh, and the FSM should be um, advanced quest. Um, so, now that should work. Okay. So it's working. Okay, you can see it's updating the counter and the text. Next time I go, it should update this to one. Okay, I need to fix that. Maybe or maybe not. Oh yeah, I don't have this door set up yet, so um, we'll work on that next. So the other problem is the counter not being updated. Um, it appears, comes on screen, but then when I find the descrambler, it does not update. You can see here I had the FSM of the descrambler opened, and the descrambler does disappear. Um, it just doesn't update the um, view. Well, the reason that, the reason that is because remember I, I didn't always have my uh, manager there. I, I delete my manager, did it from scratch. So that means I need to tell the descrambler to update my, uh, the descrambler trigger I should say, to update the appropriate manager. So it's not going to be here. It's not going to be when I pick it up. It's going to be when I notify. Yeah, notify and destroy. Where well, wouldn't you know? Look at this. Um, so it looks like we're going to have to go... Uh, hold on. So you can see my uh, descrambler in the notify an event um, has the last thing it sends out an event which we don't have we don't have set up yet, but you know how to add that event. Plays the sound, same thing you add, go to the action browser, hit play, find that action, hit play, you can hit play sound, play play sound here. Um, then you basically tell it it's going to be coming from the same, from the trigger, from the owner. Then you drag the sound file in here. That's pretty much it. Then this, all, all this other stuff actually just locates the, uh, the scrambler in the scene and then finally destroys the light, destroys the whole the scrambler um, uh, prefab. But anyway, what we need to do to make our GUI text work is this first one here, send event. Obviously, you need to send it before it destroys itself. So, so it start, the first thing it does, send it the, an event. It's going to be uh, uh, object FSM. Um, we're going to specify the game object. It's going to be the quest manager. That's what we were missing before. Go quest manager. Drag it in here. Um, and it's going to be called the scrambler collected. Of course, that's going to be the um, a global variable that, no, that's scrambler held, sorry. 
uh, oh yeah, that's actually the the global variable in the uh, other event, right? Um, this has a few event, a couple events here, but this event is discreetly collected is actually on the Gold Quest Manager, which is here. And now, this Grambler collected should be called, should go here and uh, update that. Send out, and now send out a message to the GUI text counter, and the GUI text counter should update this uh, number. Let's see. Yep, find source. Oh, door control panel flap. Oh, find the Grambler. Uh, what if I go here and try to do it without it scrambler? Oh, I get a buzzer sound. Okay. Get to the scrambler. Now, notice it does update one of two. And then the final thing would be now to try to open the door. But uh, even though <laughs> it goes away, the door does not open. So let's do that next. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab the cargo door trigger. Maybe this is just a, uh, a game object with a box collider added to it with no mesh, has an audio source on it because it needs to play it needs to play the sound uh, of the door opening um, placed in the right position. The box, it, the door itself has its own uh, mesh, mesh collider. Uh, yeah, I thought it did. I'm pretty sure it does. But that's not, not, yeah, it has its own uh, Collider, just to lead to uh, that it's parented to. Um, so wherever it goes, collider goes with it. Um, okay, now trigger. Um, need to open up editor, add FSM, and we need to figure out what we're going to do next. Now most likely it's going to be uh, let's set up our variables first. Um, so variables. Uh, it's going to be using a global variable. Um, that global var variable, I'm not sure if it's actually created yet. If it's not, we will create it. Um, let's go to global variables. And it's going to be using something called the um, inner door closed. Oh, huh, it's there. Oh, no, I'm wrong. It's going to be using something called the outer door closed because we need that, the outer door. Okay, and that's going to send this to the inner door. Okay, um, this variable here is being was created when you do the inner door one, and uh, that sends the message uh, out to. Or we check that e each door checks the other door to make sure that they're closed before they open. So we need to add our variable here. Um, now, if it's referenced already in the script, it will it will give me a shortcut to to it. But if it's not, I can do it by Scratch and door closed. Inner door closed. Uh, no, sorry. Outer door closed. Outer door closed. Yeah, that's it. And there it is. It's not being used yet, so um, no, it's the wrong type. Boolean. Okay, I should have said that before. And I think we want to set that to uh, true to be open because it's going to be true that the door is closed when it first starts. So remember to set your variables correctly. <laughs> Double check everything. And uh, okay, that's the one global variable we're going to be using. It's not going to show up in the list to actually reference it. Uh, any events for sure. Let's see. Yeah, we have a finish trigger exit trigger stay which are built in events. But we need to actually have our one um, we need to use a global event open from remote because the first thing we're going to do is going to check to make sure see if you check if you clicked on the um, the control panel um, and we're going to need wait for inner door for, uh, event um, which is going to actually wait to make sure check a variable make sure, check a boolean the boolean we set up check make sure that the inner door is closed before we can open the outer door so yeah let's just uh, um, set those events up. Um, open from control. That probably already exists. So I'm going to go to just to save time. 
open from control. Remember, this op this exists because I have it set up in another already. But if you don't, if you, if you write it for the first time, it's not going to be there. So you have to write it and uh, put that event in here, and then click away. And we're going to do wait for inner door. That I'm sure is not here. This is not a global event. It's just going to be used within this. Uh, in this FS, FSM, wait for inner door, yeah, and uh, the other one, finish trigger event, trigger stay, uh, we're going to set those up on the fly. So this first state is going to be called remote open, and that's just going to wait for an event from that global event called open from control that we set up and gets caught from the remote. So since we have it set up, I can add it here, open from control. Okay. Now once that gets done, let's take care of this. We're going to go down and do the first opening of the door. Then we're going to loop through and delay and check and do a bunch of other things. But now we have one that's called opening. And uh, what this is going to do is it's going to, um, the Boolean starts out as true, that the door is closed, but as soon as we go to open it, we're going to flip it to false. So you can do a uh, bool flip. Sounds kind of funny, but that's what it's called. Bool flip. So it's just toggling, toggling it to um, which one is going to, it's a global variable and it's going to be the um, outer door is closed. Because now, door, and it's flipping it, starting at it true, but now we're flipping it to be false. Okay? Outer door closed is now going to be false. Okay? And now we're going to play audio, action browser. And we're going to use an audio play. Oh, I guess it's ah, and we're going to do do a play animation. So I might as well go ahead and do it all. Now that I have this open, hit play because we need to actually play the animation of the door opening. Now I can go and set those up. So uh, and actually, let's move this down at the bottom because I want to do a finish event out of this. So we're going to do this uh, move to bottom. Oops, that's wrong move action to bottom. Okay, so what audio clip are we going to play? Um, well, science fiction space door. Um, we going to use the owner, which is the uh, trigger. Um, if you don't see this, you'll have to click in here and say, you know, use owner, specify owner. We're going to leave the volume like it is. Uh, it's going to be a one-shot clip, and we are going to uh, look from here audio it's called sci-fi space door um it's got science fiction space door no, i don't know which one it is i think it might be this one uh, we'll see what it sounds like <laughs> yeah i think it's that one so that's the audio it's going to play as long as that trigger has an audio source on it it will play that um, you know, you might have to go in here, and, and if it's 3D, you might have to make it very, the play with the parameters to make sure that it, you can hear it, but um, that's something else. It's another video. Um, play animation. Well, uh, we can't use the owner, because the owner doesn't have the animation. It's the actual door. So we need to specify a game object. Uh, it's going to be the cargo door outer. Now, if I'm careful, I could actually grab it from here. Um, click, do not release, drag it from here. If that doesn't work, then we're, you would have to uh, use the uh, select by name. Um, animation, now it should show us a list. Here we go. And because we, since it knows that door, that cargo door has animation on it, 
should show us a list. And here's the list. It's going to be cargo door opening. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it's opening instead of opening, but that's how I named it. And uh, no blend time. Ah, it has a blend time here. I guess I put this at 0.5. For some reason, I liked it better. And uh, when it's finished, we're going to have a finished event here. Um, we need to actually add a finished event here and transition uh, finish. And now we'll be able to actually get that finished event here and make it finished. Finished event is here. And um, mm -hmm. opening. Um, and I guess the next thing it's going to do is, let's see, remote control, yeah. So it's open. Now we need to go to the next step, which is, um, I, I had to put this, you would think that the next thing is to go to the trigger and wait for it to close, but I had to put a small uh, delay here, because I didn't want it to be re-triggered too soon. Um, so we have a small, um, an FSM called, I mean, a state that we're going to just call it wait. Um, I guess I called it wait one, but you could just call it wait because there is not going to be a wait one. Um, oh, wait two, I mean. So this is going to be a wait in here. Um, well, guess what? We just put a wait in here and wait for three seconds. Here it is. And, you know, this is something that you can, uh, once you do some game testing, you can go ahead and tweak it. And then when that finishes, we're going to go to a finish event. Since we already used to find it here, we should have one here. Okay, I guess I need to add it here. Add a transition finish. And now it can go to finish. So this finish goes to the wait. And this finish, um, now we can actually go to try to trigger the door if we need to close it, right? Um, and remember, this is just the first time we open the door, okay? Um, so once we go through here and we open it once and we close it once, then we can then we're going to check to see if it can open it up the second time. Because the first time it's quite easy because it's the first door that she opens. Uh, and then of course we need to close it before the inner door can actually open. So we're going to do one loop and then we're going to do a check after that. So we're going to do here at state uh, and this is going to be this is going to be the actual open state. When the door is open, we need to now um, wait for the trigger event to actually close the door. Um, and this is going to be a trigger exit. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, trigger exit. Because she, she obviously triggered it. For, well, actually, this is remote, so there's no trigger that even happened yet. So uh, this is going to be, now this gets tricky because I always forget what is that. This is a global uh, system event trigger exit. Yeah, okay, that was pretty good. Trigger exit now. Um, it's going to go here, wait for a trigger exit. Now here, what we just need to do is um, send an event that um, make sure that, let's say the player just walks away while the door is opening and never comes back to trigger the door closing. Well, we need to actually uh, add a um, send an event to actually close the door. Okay, if the if the uh, if, if the character just left the door open, bit of cleanup. So send event. It's going to be itself. It's going to. What do we want to event? Send trigger exit. Now, um, yeah and trigger exit. And that's just this event here, which is going to tell it, hey, the trigger's been exited, even though it hasn't. And what, but we're going to put a delay on here, so we're going to do a 15 second delay, so if character, now you can tweak this to maybe 5 or 10 would work. Um, so it's a delay, and uh, after a while, even if the character's not there anymore, it sends it to the next event, which is going to be uh, animation of it closing. Now I'm wondering if I can just take uh, this opening and close it. How much of it is can I copy? Um, I can audio play, play animation. I can actually copy uh, almost this whole thing and just rename it. So I'm just going to copy this state. Then I'm going to paste this date. Oh, it's 
garlic paste dates yeah I don't know why that happened and I'm gonna actually rename this one closed for closing 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 this is closing I don't need this boolean flip anymore so let's delete that uh, remove remove what's that remove action audio um it's going to be the same audio, the door of the, of it. Oh, yeah, by the way, I just need to go to here. Okay. Um, this has a finish, which we do need. And now we're just going to ch change the animation. Uh, audio play. Um, science fiction door. No, I think that's the same one. For some reason, I turned the audio do down on this, but we don't need to. Um, we are going to just change the animation to cargo door closing. Now yours um, might be named differently if you depends on how you named your animation. Um, but you need an animation of the door closing and an animation of the door uh, opening. Okay. Um, so after it closes, now we need to have the trigger event where um, it's just going to actually wait for someone to open it okay um, so yeah make it add a state name of this state is going to be uh, closed because in its closed state it's now going to do another trigger event but you know what I'm going to do here I'm going to actually uh, not do a trigger uh, enter I like a trigger stay so that means as long as the character is staying there, it will um, it works a little better in the way that I have it set up. It it actually opens the door, then it waits a couple of seconds, and then it actually um, well, you'll see how it works. It won't automatically re-trigger if you um, leave. I mean, it, well, actually, you have to stay there, or it will just close by itself. Okay. Um, let me see. Excellent. Uh, trend, oh, global event, system event, trigger, stay. Yeah. So this listens for the trigger, stay, and sets the doors, close, boo, boolean to true. So now that the door is closed, we need to reset the boolean. Actually, now from closing, we can actually, from the finished, we can go here. Okay. And then from... Um, from closed, uh, we need to set the bool back to um, be true if the door is closed. So we're going to do set bool. And um, what variable? Inner door is, uh, out of door is closed. Out of door is closed. Um, set it to true. This means true, that means false. Set it back to true. And now if we loop this, then we couldn't check for the other door. We need one important thing. We need to check to see if the inner door is open or closed. And if it's open, then we can go, we have to wait for it to close. And if it's, if it's closed, we can go directly into here and uh, open our door after we go to the trigger. Okay? So, um, now we're going to do a inner door check add state inner door check uh, let me spell exactly like I spelled it before this is probably not that important but it might be maybe I reference it from someplace else and I uh, inner door check and I guess I didn't have any spaces Inner door check. Um, now the inner door check obviously needs to check, do a boolean test. Um, so we're going to do here action. Actually, uh, we know that's going to come out to here and do the inner door check before it can actually go to the opening, right? So here we inner door check. Uh, we need to actually go here and and look for a uh, bool test, which is a boolean test. True or kind of kind of true or false. Uh, kind of. On or off, one or two, no, basically, true or false. 
So, what do we need to check? Well, hmm, uh, it's a global that we have set up. Once again, if we've set up this global before, we'll see it in this list. And it's, we're going to be checking the uh, inner door closed. Inner door is closed. Okay? Um, because this is the outer door. So we're going to be checking the inner door to see if it's closed. And if it's true that it's closed, we're going to go to the finish event. Let's add that he transition here. And that finish event is going to go to the opening. Oops, come back here. Going to go to the opening. But if it's false, we need to do something. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to a small event that's just going to be called, uh, oops, let me double check something. Events? Oh no. I have an event here that's called wait for the door. That's fine. Okay, so yeah, we're going to do wait for the door. Okay? And of course, we need to add that here. Um, transition event, wait for the door. Oh, sorry. Sometimes it does that. Add transition. Uh, what was that going to be? Finished. Sometimes it overwrites that one if you have it checked. So, finished is going to go to delay. No, no, finished is going to go to opening. No, 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 sorry. Yeah, finished is going to go to opening. And wait for the door. That's wrong. You're going to go someplace else. But I don't know how to delete this. Uh, <laughs> Delete this link. Uh, link style. Nope. Nope. It doesn't let me clear. Nope. It doesn't let me delete that. But okay. I'll just make the next one. And it's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be a delay. It's going to be called delay. Okay. Uh, add state. This is going to be called a delay. Okay. That's exactly what it's going to do. And now I can just make that go to that delay. And now uh, it's going to delay for a number of seconds. Uh, to make sure that it can recheck the trigger if you're still standing in the trigger and then uh, check to see if uh, the inner door is closed and if it is then you can go to the opening because that's already set up to go to the opening right um, just test it so now we need to just put a delay in here and it's going to be a delay of I think I think it put three seconds uh, yeah oh actually five uh, action browser uh, it's going to be a wait going to be five seconds. When it finishes, it's going to go out to finish. And I need to make sure that that transition is here. And then it's going to go back to the trigger to check the trigger. Okay? So now, if I've done everything right, that should work. May not, but... And we can watch it spin its wheels when it's in here, which is sometimes fun to do. So let's see. And the power source. Let's find the descrambler. Is it descrambler? Open the door. Here we go. Open the door. Now, if I leave, it won't re-trigger it because it, it's going to have a small delay for me to re-trigger it, which I might want to change it and re-trigger it sooner. This door will not open until the other door closes. Another door is closed. This has a small delay on it, waiting for it to trigger. Oh, no, it doesn't. You know why? Because we need to set some things up for this door because we deleted some things and we need to put them back. So this door is not doing anything. Which means, if you look at its FSM, it's probably stuck in its delay. Look at that, it's waiting to get a message. It's waiting. It's delayed. Checks. No message. No, not getting it. It's not getting that message here uh, from the uh, other door. Um, let's see what happens if we try to open the other door. Eh, probably not. That's fine. Okay, so... We just need to change that. That's, I'm sure, something quite simple. Ah, you can even see here, it gives me an error message that this is not working. 
because the Boolean test does not know what to check because it wasn't created at the same time. So if I go here, sorry, uh, so the inner door we need to check and we need to tell it to what global? Well, we're going to check the outer door. And if it's finished, then it's just like before. This is just like the one we just set up, except there's no remote. This happens when one, one major loop. Once again, I still have these uh, uh, comments on here, so try to ignore them if they bother you. And this is just one like we did before. It just doesn't have that remote loop. It's got the uh, closed. Uh, it's checking to see if the inner door is closed. If it's uh, closed, then it can go and do its weight, its opening, its weight, its triggering. When it's closed, uh, send that out after a certain amount of time, the auto close. Then it can play the animation close, go in here. And this is what it was missing. It was just missing that variable here. And now there's no errors. And I believe um, that's quite a long video. I'm going to have to break it up to a couple to three different videos I believe. And now you understand why I would not try to do all this uh, in one video. Uh, the other uh, the other FSMs you can set up uh, quite easily yourself just by following the following the uh, following the the PDFs I've been giving you. I've given you each FSM with all of its event settings, all the variables you need and this door should be opening now. There we go. The other door has to close because it didn't trigger it. Now this one. So that means that if, it, if you know, I could go back and change that 15 seconds to maybe, to maybe, uh, maybe uh, five seconds, change this weight here to maybe two seconds. Uh, I did that because if I didn't, look what would happen. It's going to do this and then it's going to start. I think it's going to close. I think it starts to auto close on me. And maybe that's not, maybe I fixed it because I put an uh, event treat. Oh, there it is, yeah. See, after a while, it just wants the auto close on me, which is fine. Um, which makes sense, actually. Now, if I can trigger it. Now, the inner door will open after a while. So, I have some of those delays. You can maybe go and change it 50 seconds to make it much better. But I was just wanted to make sure it was working properly, and uh, if you put them too small, they might uh, it might skip a skip a beat. It might not work. So that's it. Everything is working. I set up the three FSMs, showed you the major setup, um, showed you almost every every kind of variable uh, that you need to set up. Um, that's it. Have, have fun.